fourth graders and welcome back. I am Mrs. Lamondo here to bring you our Fontes and Pinnell mini lesson of the day. Today we are moving into our last umbrella of lessons for fourth grade. Hard to believe we're already here. We had been talking a lot about graphic novels and now we're going to shift gears just a tiny bit and think about illustrations and how they really add to books that we may choose to read. So let's get started. Today we're starting with LA U11 Lesson 2. Today we are going to discuss how illustrations help enhance the meaning of a book. I am going to read a few pages of these hands and I want you to think about the illustrations as I read. What do you notice about the way the illustrations add meaning to the story? And we're actually gonna play a quick little video so you can really see the illustrations pretty clearly. Look, Look at these, at these hands, hands Joseph. Joseph. Did you know these hands used to tie a triple bowline knot in three seconds flat? Well, I can still help a young fella learn to tie his shoes. Yes, I can. Look at these hands, Joseph. Did you know these hands used to make the ivory sing like a sparrow in springtime? Well, I can still show a young fellow how to play heart and soul. Yes, I can. Look at these hands, Joseph. Did you know these hands used to pluck the ace of spades right out the thin air? Well, I can still teach a young fellow how to do a waterfall shuffle. Yes, I can. Look at these hands, Joseph. Did you know these hands used to throw a curveball faster than a dive bombing honeybee? Well, I can still help a young fella learn to hit a line drive. Yes, I can. Look at these hands, Joseph. Did you know these hands were not allowed to mix the bread dough? in the Wonder Bread Factory? Did you know these hands were not allowed to touch the bread dough in the Wonder Bread Factory? These hands were only allowed to sweep the floors and work the line and load the trucks because the bosses said white people would not want to eat bread touched by these hands. Well, these hands joined with other hands and we wrote our petitions and we carried our signs and we raised our voices together. Now any hands can mix the bread dough, no matter their color. Now any hands can touch the bread dough, no matter their color. Yes, they can. Look All right, we're going to pause right there. I think, though, we got a really good understanding of how the illustrations add to the meaning of the story. The colors they used are a little bit muted to tell us that perhaps this time period is not in the present. Let's check out a few other books that we're familiar with. Let's look at some illustrations in Tea with Milk. Then we'll move on to the other side. So here we have our first illustration here. What is the author trying to show us? To me, it looks as if our character is lonely, all alone on an empty street. Let's check out our next page. Here we have an illustration. And what's happening here is the author's trying to show us how lessons or schooling was very different for May in Japan. And really trying to give us a visual of how different it is than schooling that we are used to. Let's check out one more page. Oh, sorry, the sun's right in my eyes right now. <laughs> here we have one more illustration. Now this illustration really shows us the difference between May in her traditional Japanese clothing and this gentleman who's wearing a more modern type suit. In order for the reader to understand the culture, they really showed that through illustrations. Let's check out another book that we have read earlier this year called The Other Side. Let's check out a few illustrations. So here is our first one. This is important because it shows us the fence, the fence that separates the two young girls by race. 
the author gives us an image that helps us see the wide open spaces that the girls live in and the important spot where they meet up and learn that they're not so different after all, even if they have different color skin. Let's check out another illustration from the other side. Love this one. Oopsie. So here we have our character swinging on a tire swing playing outside, and if we move over just a little bit, move it down a little bit, that is the first time we see someone who will be a very important character in this book. Let's check out an illustration further into the book. Here is our narrator and Annie sitting on the fence, sharing stories, chatting, laughing, becoming friends. And if we move over just a little bit, we see Mama watching the girls, weary because she understands the racism that they face, but also happy that her daughter has found a friend. So many wonderful illustrations can be found in books. Remember, when you are reading a book, play, pay rather close attention to the illustrations. How do they add to what the author wants you to understand about the book? Does it help you better understand the time period or the place or the kind of social injustices that are going on in that time? Be on the lookout for how illustrations add to a book you may be reading. All right, fourth graders, that's all for today. Until next time, I'll see you then. Bye.